Okay, so it's recording. So, uh, as you can see, we're jumping ahead to chapter 14 now, okay? It's because the integration chapter, you don't really want to do until you've done the differentiation and what have you. So this is standalone, so it makes sense for us to jump forward to 14. So we've finished that, um, uh, the, the chapter we were working on, the differentiation. Um, so what, yes, so uh, we're really waiting for the Miss Cummings bits to be finished before she'll talk you through the, the, the integration, okay? So um, I think I, you've seen that I've set you the uh, unit test on differentiation, which I've gone and popped into Teams as an assignment. So I think most of you will be familiar how the assignments work, how to upload from lockdown one. Uh, Harry, if you're not sure how to do it, it's not the end of the world. Just give it a go. But if the worst comes to the worst, just email me your answers and I'll, I'll upload it for you. Um, okay. so, uh, right, Ethan, hi, you joined us, that's good. So um, this chapter really breaks down into two parts. We've got the first bit on exponentials and then uh, logs. Okay, I want to spend quite a bit of time on logs. because It's one of these Marmite topics that people either love or hate, really. So I want to, um, it's one of these I didn't really like it until I sort of found some nice little uh, sort of methods to rely on, which I find really helpful. So I, I do want to take a time on that bit. But you know, we'll cover it all, but I, I want us just to pick and choose the bits we do from the opening two exercises. So just make sure you've got a pen handy so you can make a note of which questions we're doing and which ones we're, we're not doing. So um, we're starting off looking at the exponential functions. OK, so if you look at that example, that is y equaling 2 to the power of x. So an exponential function is where one of the variables is the power. OK, now just let's just think our way through these. So I think it's important. So X is the power. So let's start in the middle. OK, so we just start in the middle there and just get my highlighter working. When X equals naught, remember anything to the power of naught is one. So you're always going to have these graphs, these exponential graphs, going through the coordinate 0, 1, where it's 2 to the power of x, or 4 to the power of x, or 6 to the power of x. That base number, that big number, won't make a difference, OK? Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So unless the graph is being transformed, which it could be, you know, it could be shifted up, down, left, or right, 0, 1 will be your starting point. Now, obviously, as you go to the right-hand side of that, you know, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So you can see it's going to sharply go upwards to the right hand side, okay, as you go through the, the, two, the 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3. So that makes sense that that shoots up to the right hand side. And then just remember how indices work as you go into the negatives. 2 to the power of minus 1 is a half. Remember how we do that? We think of it as being 2 over 1 as a starting point, so we're creating a fraction. And because it's a minus, you're flipping it over, so that becomes 1 over 2. So 2 to the power of minus 1 is a half. So that's that green coordinate. Let's just do one more. All right, so 2 to the power of minus 2. So it's important you just don't have to rely on the calculator here. You can just, you know how to do these. Because it's a minus, you're going to flip it. So get ready to flip. Then flip it over, which gets rid of the minus. And then square the numerator and square the denominator. And that's how you get a quarter and so on. And then you've got an eight and so on. So on the left hand side, you're going to have a, a half, then a quarter, then an eighth, then a sixteenth, then one over 32, and what have you. So you, you're approaching the x-axis all the time, but you're never quite getting there. So that x-axis is an asymptote. So um, this was in the GCSE and IGCSE syllabus, but it's quite a small part of it, sort of an other graph. So you may, you may or may not be familiar with these exponential functions. 
OK, so here we're just comparing um, some of these graphs. So as the base number gets bigger, so y equals 3 to the power of x, on the right hand side, it's going to get steeper faster, isn't it? Because 3 squared is bigger than 2 squared or, and so on. So it's no surprise on the right hand side that the bigger the base number, the steeper it gets. And also on the left hand side, the bigger the base number, the quicker it starts approaching zero. So that that blue line as you go on the left hand side is the lowest of those three on the left. And that green line is the highest. OK. And then for part B, when you go and uh, you can just see that in part B, that's just really flipping it over. So it's just the other way around. So it's a reflection in the y axis. So y equals two to the power of x is this is the um, uh, is reflected in the y axis to be y equals a half to the power of x. So just just sort of perhaps in a minute, just play that through in your mind and check you can see with those coordinates that that would work. You know, half to the power of one is a half, half squared is two, half cubed is an eighth and so on. And then in the negatives, because we're then flipping it over and squaring, that's when we get the positives. OK, sorry, my dog's making some funny noises in the background. I promise you it's not me. So um, nothing really I wanted to highlight in example two. So I, what I want to do now, I just want to point out what questions I want you to do in 14a. And then I'm going to do the teaching for 14b and tell you what questions I want you to do in 14b. And then I'll leave you alone. So can you just make a note of what we are going to do? Um, I mean, I wouldn't want to do these anyway if we were in school. But the fact that you need graph paper uh, also is just obviously a hindrance. But um, so don't do number one, don't do number two. I do want you to do three, four, and in five, I want you to go and work out the coordinates, but you don't have to sketch the graph, okay? So um, you don't need to do the sketching, um, but I do want you to sort of think through the whole the whole process. Actually, no, it's a sketch the graph. So I, I've changed the plan. I was thinking it said plot. No, we can we can ignore that. It was, it was um we're just sketching. We're not plotting, are we? So that's fine. So we're not doing questions one or two, but we are doing three, four, and five, and six, and seven. So basically, all of it apart from numbers one and two. Now, um, 14.2, I want to introduce you to E. Now, E is just a specific number, all right? It's sort of between two and three. Um, you can see lower down, I'll come on to what it is in a minute, but you'll see lower down, they tell you, um, oh, whoops, I crossed it out by accident, sorry. Okay, it's 2.718828. And notice what it says after, the exact value is represented by the letter E. Like pi, E is both an important mathematical constant and an irrational number. So you, you can't represent it as a fraction, okay? It's one of these decimals that goes on forever. Now we want to get behind what E is all about. So can we look at the graphs at the top? So if we just look at all three together, please, I want you just to focus on the black lines to start with. So we've got first graph, we've got Y equaling two to the power of X. Second one, we've got Y equaling three to the power of X. And the third one, we've got Y equaling four to the power of X. Now the maths is beyond A level. But you need to take it from me on them that when you differentiate it, um, you get the red lines. OK, now remember what dy dx does. It gives us the gradients at um, every single point. So um, what we're saying with the graph number one on the left, when you differentiate, and y equals 2x, and you then go and plot the differential on the same graph, it's just to the right of it. OK, uh, the red line is just to the right of the original graph. And when you do um, plot uh, y equals 3 to the x, 
and you get dy dx. And now it just transpires that the, the, the gradient line, the differential, is just to the left of it. Okay, not worried about the third one. That's not really important to the point we're making. Now, that somewhere between two and three, you're going to have it that the differential is exactly equal to the original curve. So you get the same values, okay? And that's where this 2.71828, etc., comes along, okay? So it's the it's the when you go and draw when you go and draw y equals 2.71828 to the power of, to the power of x. When you draw that curve and you draw the differential of it, they will be slap bang on top of each other. OK, and that's why we can go and say for this magic value of E, when you differentiate it, you get exactly where you started. I'm just fluorescent, fluorescent penning that in green. There's a slight lag, so hopefully that will come. So bottom left hand corner, that is the key point. OK, when you differentiate E to the power of X, so 2.71828 to the power of X, the differential is e to the x and obviously below that which i'm just going to highlight in orange it's stating exactly the same facts just in different terminology isn't it they're just we're using y and dy dx rather than f of x and f dash, dash x okay now um we also need to learn please the ones on the right hand side that if we start introducing a constant, okay, a constant into, I'm just highlighting it in light blue there, we start introducing a constant in front of that power, then when you differentiate, that power remains unchanged, okay, it's still k to the x, but the number comes in front of two. So I'm just going to write this at the top, so just watch the one coming up right at the top of the slide. So if y equals uh, e to the 3x, when you differentiate that, you've just got to learn, please, that what you actually get when you differentiate it is e is 3 e to the 3x. So it's not that difficult, you've just got to get used to it, okay? The fact that it's, um, you're making that power bigger, okay? So um, the slope is going to be um, steeper. Right, and obviously, bottom right-hand corner, that is also obviously just putting it in the alternative terminology. We're using y's and dy dx's rather than f of x's and f dash x's. So e is an important number, okay? It's a nice, it's a clever number, but when you go and differentiate e to the power of x, you, it's unchanged. Right, so, um, so you can see example three, that first example is just practicing what I just said. OK, so uh, because we've got four in the power, a four has come in front when we've differentiated it and in B and in C. OK, in C, to just have a look at C. So we've got that three at the front already, so that remains unchanged. And then when we differentiate the E2 to the X bit, we get two lots of E2 to the X, two threes are six. OK, then there's a little bit there of um, just trans trans transforming the graphs. So I think I just lot really like to have us practicing those rather than spending ages um, looking at the examples. And then we're into exercise 14B. So when we get onto that, absolutely no point just plugging it into your calculator. I mean, find where the E button is on your calculator, but I don't need you just to practice plugging stuff into a calculator. Equally, I don't want you doing number two and then we're away. So in short, we're doing both exercises, but not questions one and two. So let's make a start on that now, please, starting with the previous exercise. And uh, we'll see how far we get by the end of the lesson. Um, you can let me know how far you got by the end of the lesson, and then I'll make a judgment call on what we do on, on Friday. OK, cheers, guys. I'll, um, I'm still being here, but I'm just going to stop the recording. So if you could get on with that now, that would be great. And I'm just going to stop the recording.